Welcome to Honey on the Slate. We are celebrating another day of life and learning from Pastor John Hora. I'm excited to see what the Holy Spirit has for us today. Hey, me too. Sometimes I think I know what I'm going to talk about. And then the Holy Spirit surprises me. Sometimes I don't have any idea what I'm going to talk about. And <laughs> sometimes it shows. But tonight, I'm going to rely on the Holy Spirit as we should all the time. And I want to remind us about how, mm, how really incredibly deep and profound uh, Paul's uh, letters are to us. The this Ephesians um, book, we're in chapter six, and uh, I want to just remind us that um, the, the, First half of this book is about the work of God in um, putting us in Christ. And the second half is about how we walk as a consequence of having Christ in us. So it's it's telling us about our blessings in Christ, our experience of salvation, um, and then and then growing in the knowledge of him. And then that being said he goes into our conduct which is first of all the conduct of the church overall the we fit into the, the unity of the church the, the body of christ and then there's how do we live on a daily basis when we walk out in the world when we're walking as lights in the in you know uh bearing the light of god into the world um how do we uh, conduct ourselves and then from being the general how you are out in the world is how are you at home? How how are we consistent in our faith uh, at church, out in the world, and at home? And all based in love, based upon now Christ is in us. We're, first of all, God puts us in Christ. Now Christ is in us. We walk that out. And how does that show up in the family? Um, and that's our domestic duty. And that's where it's Wives, submit to your husbands. Husband loves your wives. Children, obey. Slaves, um, obey, uh, et cetera, et cetera. How is that at home? And the last part is about the, the conflict. Because all of this stuff is for a reason. It's not just a bless me club. Um, there, there is a conflict in the, in the heavenly realm, in the unseen realm, in the spirit realm. Uh, with the rebel, who, uh, the adversary of God, and we have a role to play um, in, um, in in exposing him and teaching people about uh, the difference between the light and the dark. There is a difference. We come out from the world. We no longer like the world. We're no longer under the, the dominion of Satan. We're, 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 we have dominion on earth and with God's authority. We're the light of the world. Um, and we're different in that regard. And so Paul talks about, after we get the first half of um, chapter six, where he's talking about all the domestic stuff, you know, uh, uh, servants and children and wives, husbands and wives and that stuff. Paul goes into, and he's summing up, and at verse 10 of chapter six, he says, finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And so that's where he's setting up for this thing about the armor of God. We all know it. We should know it by heart. I'm going to read it in the the, uh, the Good News for Modern Man translation, which I'm really enjoying. And I want to read those familiar verses to us, starting with verse 10 of chapter 6. Finally, build up your strength in union with the Lord and by means of his mighty power. Put on all the armor that God gives you so that you will stand up against the devil's evil tricks. For we are not fighting against human beings, but against the wicked spiritual forces in the heavenly world, the rulers, authorities, and cosmic powers of this dark age. So take up God's armor now. Then when the evil day comes, you will be able to resist the enemy's attacks. And after fighting to the end, you will still 
hold your ground. Uh, before I move on to verse 14, um, when the evil day comes, I used to think that that meant the evil day, like there's one evil day, and when that comes, you better be ready. Well, it might mean that. Paul might be talking about a tribulation, uh, some big deal. But it also could be you're having a bad day. Whenever there's something that's distracting you, something that is trying to get you down and you're feeling it and you're, you are you find yourself spiraling downward or under some kind of attack, you get that uneasy feeling, things aren't going, going right. This ain't heaven, as I want to say. But if we consider why he's talking about the army is it, it is so that you will be able to resist the enemy's attacks. This is when the evil day comes, you'll be able to resist the enemy's attacks. And my recent message uh, on Sunday about uh, how we peace our way through this. We don't struggle in the flesh. We are, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal at all. It's the opposite of carnal fighting. It's the opposite of struggling in the flesh. Um, it's it's resting and yielding to God's power by staying cool. Stand still, see the salvation of God. Um, so that you'll be able to resist the enemy's attack and after fighting to the end, fighting to the end, fighting by standing, fighting by with the armor employed, fighting in Christ, not in the flesh, fighting by yielding to him, by staying cool. When you get to the end of the fight, the end of the attack, you're still standing. You're holding your ground. He didn't, he didn't move you. You didn't budge because you're in Christ. Now, I'm going to, uh, let me just finish reading about the armor. armor. Verse 14. So stand ready, have truth for a belt tight around your waist. Put on righteousness for your breastplate and the readiness to announce the good news of peace as shoes for your feet. At all times, carry faith as a shield. With it, you will be able to put out all the burning arrows shot by the evil one and accept salvation and for a helmet and the word of God as the sword that the spirit gives you. Now, let's talk a little bit about this armor. And I was thinking of a good way of illustrating it. I know, and it, maybe it's true about you, but I, I, I like to draw examples of my early readings of the scriptures because I came to some uh, tainted conclusions, tainted by law, tainted by not fully understanding grace, tainted by not even fully understanding the Old Testament, not that I fully understand it, but I mean, not really seeing how deep Paul's truths are, are, are sourced from Isaiah primarily, but other New Testament, because he knew the New Testament as a Pharisee. And so, um, well, I'll say, you know, as a young believer, I always thought, or I struggled with this. Well, when he says that, um, um, about uh, putting on the armor, put on the whole armor of God. My first thought is, oh, I, I need that. I don't have it. I need to get it. And so it's like putting on, so I, not, I had to think how to me mentally, this is obviously not physical armor. How do I mentally put this on? And then I looked at, at like it was a la carte. You could have, oh, there's, a, okay, there's, there's a shield, there's a sword. Oh, there's a buckler. What's a buckler? There's a the loins girded. I don't know what that is. Um, and his feet shod with the, with the gospel of peace. So I've got my sandals or shoes, but then I've got the gospel, which is words. So it took me a while to try to, mm, uh, metaphorically piece this together and understand it. So I was thinking about when you um, when you buy a, a car back in the day. I, I remember when my my family uh, uh, would go to the car dealer to buy a car. We would order the car, and uh, you didn't go pick one out uh, of the showroom. You'd order the car, and you could order the color that you wanted and the accessories. 
And I remember for, for many years when I was really, really little, my parents, they bought a car, they didn't have a radio in it. They didn't want a radio because my dad thought that would be distracting, It'd be too much of a distraction. He's got little kids in the car. He doesn't want to you know, be distracted by the radio. And then air conditioning was too expensive. Um, uh, but so there's different things that you could, you know, options that you had that you could choose to have uh, on the car. And then you, you know, make the deal. And then three, four, five, six months later, your car's ready. And so these, this armor of God, when, if we pigeonhole these things too much, they, trust me, all these different aspects the 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 belt of truth that girdle is a belt of truth the the breastplate of righteousness feet shod with the gospel of peace the shield of faith the helmet of salvation um, all of these things constitute the armor and the sword of the spirit um, I could easily do a whole Sunday on each one of those things and just be scratching the surface because there is there's a lot that goes I into the picture that Paul's painting what's he painting a picture of and remember the book of Ephesians, the letter of Ephesians. It's about uh, the work of God, uh, the cross work of God that placed us in Christ, and then our life in Christ as we live as Christians in this world, of uh, with Christ in us. So the armor is part of who we are in Christ and who Christ is for us. What that means to us. It's not like, oh, I'm in Christ. Now I got to go, I got to go in armor. Where do I get the armor? What is that? He's trying to, to message, to telegraph to you some things that are true about who God is, what he is to us. So before we uh, we move uh, in, you know, beyond the armor, I want to revisit it again a little bit more in detail. So um, first of all, armor itself. Uh, Paul says in Romans 13, 12, he says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand, let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Well, gee, he didn't say anything about armor of light here. I wonder if he forgot it. It's got to be something different. God is light, folks. We walk in the light as he is in the light. We have now become light in the Lord. So as being an image bearer, you are bearing the light, not on a, under, a, under a bushel, on a lampstand. You are radiating that light of, of, of God, of Christ in you. So all of this stuff, the armor, is armor of light, if you will, because we're finding that it's all of God himself. Now this belt of truth, the girdle of, of truth. Listen to this, Isaiah 11, 5. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. These are prophetic verses talking about Christ. Then the breastplate of righteousness, Isaiah again, 59, 17. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate. And also the second half of that is uh, and and helmet of salvation upon his head. All this was in, uh, was in Isaiah. You think Paul knew that? Of course he did. The, the feet shod with the gospel of peace. Uh, it, Paul says in Romans 10, 15, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, when you see as it is written in the New Testament, it's it's implying that it's written in the Bible, which is the, the Old Testament. New Testament, they did not have a Bible. They only had the Old Testament. So it says, it is written, is referring to uh, uh, Moses and the prophets, etc. cetera. Um, so as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Have your feet shod. Uh, that's um, then the verse. See, that's Paul in Romans quoting Isaiah. The verse in Isaiah 52, 7 is, how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that brings good tidings and that publisheth peace, 
that brings good tidings of good, that publishes salvation, that says, Unto Zion thy God reigneth. Now the shield of faith. Listen to this. Deuteronomy 33.29 Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord? The shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? O people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, and who is the sword of thy excellency? And thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. We inherit the um, the spoils. And that's a, this is a, a prophetic. For the Jews, it was a physical, actual possession of the land um, and treading down their high places. High places is where there was a lot of the Baal worship and bad things happening. High places, like with the Babylon, the, the, the Babel was a tower. It was in the high places. So in the high mountains is where... Um, uh, the the bad angels were were uh, and and humans they were messaging and that they had idol worship going on there. Oh, so anyway, moving forward to uh, about shield of faith in in Psalm eighteen verse thirty. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. In other words, it's been tested and tried. He is a buckler to all those that put their trust in him now um well here let me before i explain buckler psalm 28 7 the lord is my strength and my shield my heart trusteth in him i am helped therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song will i praise him my heart trusteth in him and i am helped therefore my heart greatly rejoiceth and with my song i will praise him this is a consequence of living under his protection. So the back to what is a buckler? The, uh, a buckler is a small round shield that you'd hold with one hand. The big shield would be something you could hide behind it, stick it in the ground. You could hide behind it when those flaming arrows are flying in battlefield. So it, you protect, you know, you're hidden behind that. It's covered with leather, um, wood covered with leather and the, the the they would soak it in the in the water in the rivers before a battle because it would be it wouldn't burn as much if they have arrows with the, that are on fire um, but a buckler is for close contact so if one hand is defending the other hand is is poking with a sword but some guy's got a sword you use the, the buckler to slice to, to move his shield to deflect it from you um okay now helmet the helmet of salvation, uh, we read the Isaiah 59, 17, the helmet of salvation upon his head. But 1 Thessalonians 5, 8, Paul says, but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Now he said we are people of the day because people, he's contrasting it with people of the night, which was where darkness you know people of darkness and that sword of the spirit um let's see deuteronomy 33 29 happy art thou israel who is like unto thee o people saved by the lord the shield of my help and who is the sword of thy excellency oh we're repeating it this that's the same thing we read that now, Hebrews 4, 12, for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. It's sharper than a sword. We, we say, this, you know, the sword of the, of the spirit. If here he's detailing it how how it is so sharp it doesn't just pierce into the flesh it divides between the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and discerns the thoughts and the intents of the heart this is all 
messaging us it pictures imagery of who god is and what he is so i've heard people say well i've got to go put my armor on if i'm going to go into the prayer closet or i've gone into the mission field i really better put my armor on okay but if you really knew who christ is and that what god did to put you in christ and who you are with christ in you living out life in this world the who, who it is that you are representing as an ambassador for God, you're imbued with his, his powers, with his favor. And, and it's from a position of having already defeated the enemy at the cross and resurrected, but back to life forever, eternally us in him. You're entering a battlefield that's where the battle's already been won. The devil's just going berserk. But remember, he says, it's only with your eyes will you see the reward of the wicked. That's Psalm 91. Um, again, messaging who is God, not some things that we have to put on. Or should we get some of this armor or should we get the buckler or the shield? Or do we, how about the belt? Do I got a belt? Do I need another? It's, it's don't complicate this. Remember, it's always pointing to who God is and who we are in him. Psalm 91, let's read that in the light of, who God is for us when we're when the evil day comes and that we stand until the end of the battle. We're still standing. We're, we have not been moved one iota. Uh, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. He that dwelleth in the armor of the Most High. He that dwelleth in that place that only believers can go into. He that has the favor of God, the grace of God, because of what Jesus did and gave to us access to that secret place, shall abide, shall live, and remain under the shadow of the Almighty, that close. Shadow is not a dark place. It means you're that close to him. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress and my armor so to speak. My God, in him will I trust. I don't trust in my, the, the, some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. We trust in him. He is our armor. We're not trusting in any armor that we had to put on or fabricate ourselves. My God, in him will I trust. Verse three, surely he shall deliver thee. From the snare of the fowler. We don't know what a fowler is, and we don't understand what a snare is. The fowler comes from the word fowl, as in birds, the fowl of the air. The snare is a trap for the birds. From my understanding of it, it would, it would be like strings that you would lay out on the ground uh, uh, um, to, to trip them up, to catch them, the birds they're while they're pecking for stuff on the ground, they can get stuck in the in the these strings that you laid out there, you know, tightly, uh, and it would and they would be ensnared in that. So that's why it's, it's called the snare, the snare of the fall, the trap of the fall. Then he could throw something over the birds and catch the birds. Um, that's also why a snare drum is called a snare drum because it has these these strings or wires or cat gut stretched against the bottom head of it. It's also called a trap drum. And that's why drums are carried in a trap set because it goes back to the snare of the fowler, you know, ancient times. Um, so he shall, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. God doesn't have feathers. He loves us and cares for us like we see birds taking care of their little birds. And under his wings, God doesn't have wings, but like a mother hen, and under his wings shalt thou trust. The little birds trust their mother to cover them. Um, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. God is truth. Shield and little shield. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. 
a thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand. I was wondering about that. You've got your, your side and at your right hand. So at your side, that's pretty close. You're in a conflict with a, with a lot of a lot of participants in it. And here God is a picture of, of how secure we can be in him. A thousand shall fall right at your side and look at your side and look over at your right to your right. 10,000 fall. But it won't come near you. It says it shall not come nigh thee close to you. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. That's who we wrestle against, is the wicked, God's adversary. But only with our eyes will we see and behold the reward of the wicked. We don't even have to lift a sword for that. We're watching God win. We're watching him prevail in battle for us, not like the Jews. This is we we fight by peace, not with a sword. And he says, We will only with our eyes will we behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, the most high God, thy habitation. It's in him we live and move and have our being. Can we get that, folks? And he says, There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up with their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The adder is a snake. If you're treading on the snake, that's reinforcing the promise in Genesis where um, he will crush the serpent underfoot. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Don't exactly know what that, what the young lion and the dragon are symbolizing there, but it surely means something more than I can explain tonight. Verse 14, all of this is because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore, will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God told Moses, stand still and see the salvation of God. Now, we can see Jesus in this. Certainly can be a messianic um, prop, you know, prophecy. But we can also see ourselves in Christ as believers and knowing who all of these messages in this, it's all Paul's evoking all of that when he's teaching us about finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. This is not a matter of our physical strength. Our strength is his, is his power and strength and victory. Our, the way that we receive that, the way that we benefit from it, the way that we're protected by it is by believing that it's true, by knowing him through his word and believing that it's true will change you and you'll find that you are living under the shadow of the almighty, that's that secret place. You're living with that armor around you. You're confident, you're fearless, you're not worried about stuff. You're more conscious of worshiping God and knowing that we're free to worship him and that we actually really have a vital relationship with him here in this dark world. It sure doesn't seem like it. You know, when we look around and we see it, we perceive things, but we, we, know, we know too much now. We've read the book. We've read the good news about what he's done for us. And it's changing us every day. The more we read this, we meditate on it, to be more and more like him. He's changing us. All we're doing is believing. And that's really the truth. I tell people, we talk about really important things that matter in life here. And 
is it's so important to know that there is a conflict, there is a battle waging out there. It's not between men and all their politics and all their wokeness and all their schemes and all their sins and stuff like that. No, we're dealing up at a, at a at a different level, and that's where that's it's from that level where we draw upon His Spirit so that we can be effective lights in this world and not be caught up and in the affairs of the world. We want to be caught up with him and, and have bring in that heavenly air to this world, the heavenly light. So I've, I've, I've gone over time, but I, um, uh, I think I got out what I wanted for today. And then um, before I turn it over to Lilia in, in the hopes that there are some questions, um, Lilia's schedule, I, I've added something to my schedule. If I have it right, Lilia, you are uh, unavailable on the, the um the see the 16th no the 16th we're good um the 9th is, we're so next wednesday we won't be meeting here if i understand it right mm -hmm. um and the 16th we will um the 23rd we won't and i'm going to take a personal day on the 30th so we will have one more um uh day we're going to wrap this up on the 16th, if, if Lily is available. And that way, when we start again on the, whatever the sixth, fifth or sixth of September, we're gonna start with the book of Philippians. So one more day and to wrap this up, and then we'll look forward to the Philippians uh, uh, beginning in the first Wednesday in, in um, September. So we'll be back here on the 16th. Does that sound right to you, Lilia? Yeah, that sounds correct. Okay, cool. Is that any, oh, we still have people here with us. Who is yep. here? I see iPhone. I think, I hope that's Diane, and I see Cassie's here. Is there anybody else here? If um, if anybody has any comments, if you were blessed by this, we hope you were. Um, but remember that we are here for you. Even after this recording is over, you can always email Pastor John Hora with any comments and questions. Yes. Wow. <clears throat> yes. And there's a lot of people who are catching it after the fact. I've noticed the, the views are really increasing for Slate, which makes me well, happy. To be live in order to participate, you can always comment. Um, I think we have that enabled on YouTube. The comments are enabled, I believe. I don't know. Okay. Well, well, well let's check that. Let's check that. Well, since um, everybody else is. Uh, Feeling blessed. Love to all. Oh. Love to you too. Ditto. Right back at you. That's wonderful. Well, I look forward to seeing you all um, um, hopefully Sunday. So um, we'll, we'll have a good time then. And so everybody have sweet dreams tonight. I I love you all. And it makes it so much easier to have somebody listening. <laughs> it gives me a reason. Thanks, y'all. So appreciate much. You. We appreciate you. Thanks, Lilia. See you guys.